Hi Reefers, it's Mindy and welcome back to Mindy's Coral Reef. Today I want to talk to you about how to take care of an aggressive fish tank. Behind me you can see that I have a 90 gallon aggressive tank that I've had over a year now. And in my tank I have a zebra moray eel. I also have a few anglers or you could call them frogfish. And I also have quite a few rhinopias scorpion fish. And like I said, they've been living in the tank for about a year now, and they've all been getting along very well together. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and hit that notification button right next to it so you don't miss out on any future videos. Now let's get on to it. What attracted me to the zebra moray eel was the contrasting colors, that it's not aggressive, and it's also reef safe. The zebra moray eel is very reclusive during the day and very active at night since it feeds at night. They have a very excellent sense of smell, which makes up for their very poor eyesight. They can also go a very long time without eating. I usually feed my moray eel shrimp, which he loves. So you can see here, I'm feeding mine shrimp with my hands, which is not very smart, since they have very strong jaws. But I'm being very careful. Every so often, I'll also feed my red chocolate chip starfish a small piece of shrimp also to keep him satisfied. I feed my anglers about two to three times per week and I feed them salt water ghost shrimp and damsels. Anglers can eat fish up to twice their size including other anglers. Anglers move very slowly, which makes it very hard sometimes for them to compete with other fish in the tank when it comes to food. They can also completely camouflage themselves with their background. This guy right here was completely pink last week. Angers have Anglers have the ability to gulp water or air to enlarge their size very quickly and to avoid being eaten by other fish.
They also have an elongated, fleshy, spine-like fishing lure. This lure is called an elysium, that they wave around quickly when prey is in sight and when they're hungry. If this should get eaten or broken off, it will grow back. Here you can see this guy, he is sucking in water, he's gulping it as he swims. Anglers have these little holes on the back of their legs where the actual the water comes out of as they swim. So they actually gulp water in through their mouth and it comes out through the little holes or their gills in the back of their legs, which you can see right there. Blackie was my first angler ever, and when I first got him, he was really small. And they told me that he wouldn't grow any bigger. And the more I fed him, the bigger he got. I think anglers are different, because my clown anglers that I have have always stayed the same size, but this one has always gotten bigger. And I had a squirrel fish that was actually twice the size of him, well probably a size and a half of him, and never would I thought with how fast that fish was that he would have eaten, but one morning it was gone and Blackie was the size of like a tennis ball. So we knew that he had eaten that fish. So, but he is one cool angler. Uh, He's got white claws. Anglers are really cool. You know, they breathe water like through their mouth and they have these little holes in the back of their bodies that the water goes through as they swim through the water. It's like they're so ugly, they're cute. Can you please leave me alone? He's probably hungry. Let's see if I can feed him. Oh. That was a really quick dancing.
got it. Look at his body shake. Oh, he got the net too. There he goes. The Rhinopius scorpionfish has long been considered the holy grail of rare and unusual fish. I feed my rhinopiuses two to three times a week until satisfied both saltwater ghost shrimp and also damsels. They'll hop towards their food, they'll lunge forward, and then they'll suck in the food. There's six different species. There's two most common in the trade, which are the weedy and the smooth looking type. They can also completely camouflage themselves with the background and also with each other. Mine are all pink and purple which I've bought all different colors. I had a deep red and also a brown one, and they've all changed color to match one another. The rhinopius will begin to get a dirty appearance and will shed their outer epidermal layer every 12 days on average to remove algae and parasites. So just like the uh, zebra moray eel, which I have in here, uh, they actually shed their skin also. My moray eels actually shed its, its skin within the past year twice. I found like a jelly-like material uh, down actually at the top of my tank, uh, the weirdest thing ever, but the rhinopiuses shed their skin uh, quite often as needed. Uh, they get dirty looking and then they shed their skin and one shedded overnight last night. I'm trying to get it on film, it's just really hard because I like to do it while I'm sleeping. So you, you can see it actually in the plant here and I'll show you something a little bit closer. but you got to get it out and it's like this gooey like texture material it's like a jelly like uh, material here so I'll, I'll get some out for you so you can see and it's like this gooey like material here it's really gross there's more down here there's like a whole bunch down here See all this? And there's some down here too. So, 
when they really should, they shake their body and they shake it all off and it fills the entire tank full of this stuff. So, and it's like this sea like fills up it's like this jelly. It's yummy. Oop. Make sure you don't clean this stuff right after you get done or right before you, you're going to eat, eat a meal because, uh, it might ruin your appetite. I was so incredibly lucky to get this on film. My rhinopius shed its skin and I grabbed my camera just in time. I wasn't able to get my filter on to adjust the colors, but at least you could see it in action. So it's shedding its skin and you can see it coming off. And as it comes off, it likes to go in water flow where it's the strongest so it can get it off as much as possible. And it will shake and move around and try to get that film off as best as, as, best as it can. It's an incredible thing to witness. As for maintenance on the tank, I'll go through briefly with you as to what I do to keep this tank uh, clean. So down below I have a wet and dry system. Um, I have an extra fan. I have um, your protein skimmer and I also have a UV right over here. Um, Bella, excuse me Bella. <laughs> um, so I'm constantly changing my protein skimmer, obviously, as it fills up, uh, which I'll show you how I clean that. Um, I have my filter pads right here. This is, I change this quite often as it's needed because uh, it fills up and I'll show you what I do. So I have an extra fan here to keep things cool. I keep the temperature at about 77 to 78 degrees um, in this tank and with the, So here is the pad. It gets quite dirty. So all I do is I just take the pad like this. You can see how dirty it is there. And voila. I put the fan back on. Just like that. And then I toss this like that. So I do that at least once a week, if maybe not twice a week, to make, just make sure that it stays clean. As for the protein skimmer, it's actually pretty full right now, so I'm going to empty it. And you can see, I left it full for you guys, so you can see me actually clean this thing out. So let's go over to the sink and clean this baby out. It smells delicious. Let's go. Alright guys, so here we go. So I normally empty this about 
once a week it fills up and it gets pretty nasty so um, it usually smells like somebody died in here so um, yeah so here we go and I know a lot of you probably think that I don't do any of the dirty work so uh, yeah, I spray it all over my counters too, so it's lovely. So yeah, so here's all the grossness right here. I'm gonna pour it in my uh, sink where I cook all my dinners. And I'm gonna pour it on my hand a little. And uh, it literally smells like someone just died. And um, just so you know, I, I use this as the toothbrush that I brush my teeth with. I, I just, you know, I try to save money and use the same toothbrush. So, but I get in here pretty well and I kind of clean all the gook out. It's really hot. So, I get in here pretty good. I clean all the fish poop out. Make sure it's all out of here. like this. I'm pretty used to this. I've been doing this for how many years now? So, hey, I mean, this is nothing. I have a three-year-old. I mean, I'm used to having human feces underneath my fingernails. So, this is like nothing. So, anyway, that's about it. Um, I'm going to stick this baby right back. It's all clean. Stick this baby right back on the in there and then we'll get on to the next thing. Let's go. All right, so up above in the hood, it's gonna be kind of bright, just warning you. I have all LED strips up here, um, but as for cleaning, let me move this over here. Um, I have a sponge filter up here. Let me move this guy over. So, you want to come a little bit closer. So I have a sponge filter right here that sits right in the overflow. So as this gets dirtier, I'll take the sponge out and I'll clean this. Right now it's not too dirty because um, I clean it quite often, uh, but I will clean this and make sure that it always stays pretty, pretty clean. So that sits right down in there in the overflow. everything that you saw today and that I answered most of your questions if there's anything that I missed make sure that you leave it in the comments below and if you haven't subscribed make sure to hit the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell right beside it so you don't miss any future videos to come thank you again guys I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you again in the next video